Welcome to Brands Hatch for the final two rounds of the championship. We've already got a champion, Alan van der Merber took care of that at Donington Park, so this week it's the turn of the scholarship class to take centre stage. Their title race is far from over, in fact it could go any one of three ways. The battle between Stephen Kane, Ernesto Viso and Karen Chantel has raged since day one of the championship. It's sometimes been a bit too close for comfort, but the victory roll is impressive to say the least. Between them they've won all but one of the 22 races. Kane has six wins, Chandok seven and Viso a sensational eight. All of that means Viso has just a one and a half point lead over Kane, whilst the Donington DNF puts Chantok 20 and a half points behind the Venezuelan. One thing's for sure, this really is too close to call. I'm sure I can do it because I'm sure of me, I'm sure of the car and I'm very happy and uh, I'm working very hard to to win the race and the team has been very good, my car has been very consistent and uh, I think we can do it. The last few rounds I have been very competitive but just things haven't worked out with um, had a clutch problem and then driver errors but I've been very competitive the last sort of three rounds now and if I can get that this weekend uh, I should be there. You know for me it's just a simple job, I've got everything to gain, nothing to lose you know. If, if I make a move down the inside it doesn't pay off, it doesn't make a difference to me but to them they have to finish both races. I must admit it'll be quite amusing if they take each other off but uh, you know, we just have to wait and see what happens. If I can win the championship, it'll be the first time in, in Indians won an international Formula 3 championship. You know, it'll be a huge thing, not just for me, for, for everyone in, in Indian motorsport. Corinne uh, in his second year has taught me a lot this year. I've sort of I've learned a lot of him. As long as I can keep on learning, that's, that's the main thing, and the team's done a brilliant job. It would be the perfect thing to do is to win the championship for them, and that's what they deserve, really. But racing's racing at the end of the day, and it doesn't matter who's around you, you just have to win it, and that's it. In the championship class, the big news is the return of 2002 champ Robbie Kerr. He's back with ADR to help with the development of the Lola Dome F106. It's good to see the old crowd and uh, be working with them again. It's good fun again, but we've got a job in hand and that's to develop the car as quickly as possible. And that's what we're looking at, all the shortfalls. And uh, It's a test and that's how we've got to treat it. We're going to be working hard. We've changed lots in qualifying. You've probably seen them come in, change quite a few things. But they've got to be done and we've got to find out how to make the car work as quickly as possible. Also making his 2003 debut is the Formula Renault champ and McLaren-backed Lewis Hamilton. He teams up with Manor for his first taste of Formula 3. I finished the Formula Renault season and um, no, I think the best thing was just to move on as quick as possible and get testing their three because I think that's what we want to do next year. I know the team already and they're a great bunch of lads. They haven't won a championship for a couple of years but I don't think they really had the drivers to do it. But um, no, hopefully with the right decision maybe I can be with them next year and maybe do it for them. It's the penultimate round and Nelson Piquet's on pole. But that's not always an advantage here at Brands because of the notorious dip in the circuit. Will Davison's a bit of a surprise alongside him because he hasn't won a race since Croft back in May. In the scholarship class, Ernesto Vizo's drawn first blood, taking 12th place and he's put five cars between himself and the T-Sport duo. Well, Nelson Piquet Jr. has a record to beat. His father won here 25 years ago. Will Davidson is right alongside, followed by Eric Samignon and Danny Watts, Jamie Green and Billy Asaro. Lewis Hamilton on his debut lines off on row four alongside Clivio Piccioni, with Andrew Thompson and Robert Dahlgren competing the top ten, head of Michael Kierhan and Ernesto Viso, the scholarship class front runner. This is going to be interesting. The engine revs already rising. A superb start from Will Davidson on the outside the front row, but it's PK who comes through. And Eric Salignon gets swamped by the fact that this is second gear. Salignon made a good start, a reasonable start at least, but it looked like he lost all that momentum in second gear and he's dropped a few places already. Danny Watts has got around the outside and he's already challenging Jamie Green. Well, Jamie Green in third place, Danny Watts in fourth. It's PK and Davidson now at the head of the order, followed by Green and Watts. Eric Sainion, we're riding with him in fifth place, ahead of the Canadian, Billy Asaro, in the green and white car, or at least we were. Plenty of up and down the pack movement at the moment. We're now riding with Ernesto Viso, scholarship class leader. Whoa, and you can just see here as we run up onto the Grand Prix circuit, this really is awesome racing. Yeah, the circuit here at Brands Hatch on the Grand Prix track they're on now is a fantastic venue as they head up towards Hawthorne and they go to Hawthorne, it's a very fast Westfield next. 125 miles an hour, building to 130, you're on the power all the way to Westfield corner. But meanwhile, let's have another look at that start, what happened to Sainz, dropping from third to fifth. There you go, you can hear him hit the rev limiter in third. 
first gear and he loses all that momentum as he changes to second. Just a little too long in first gear then and that cost Sanyon two places across the line. It's PK extending his advantage now from Will Davison. We're riding with Davison. Big twitch there as the car shoots down through Paddock Hill. Ben uses all the runoff area. Now it's Druid's hairpin. This really is one of the classic circuits ideally suited to Formula 3 cars. Three cars around this circuit, a great run, but look, Lewis Hamilton, he's had an off there, his car obviously not suiting the circuit right now, but that's just undone his great qualifying performance. Well, that really was amazing, seventh fastest in his first ever qualifying in an F3 car around the Brantap circuit. Meanwhile, Eric Sanyon still looks like he's under pressure, he's dropping back in that fifth place. Billy Asaro there, now that is a brave move all the way around the outside of Hawthorne. Meanwhile, it's a stop-go penalty, or a drive-through penalty, at least, for Will Power. He'll be very unhappy about that, I am sure. Meanwhile, the battle still goes on between Jamie Green and Danny Watts. Jamie Green in the number four car. Danny Watts, the yellow, number 17, third and fourth places ahead of Billy Sara. And, well, you know, this is the man, really an important battle, because Jamie Green really does need the finish here to get second place in the championship. He Stays there for Danny Watts. Danny Watts gets past him. It could ruin the championship hopes for Jamie Green and the Carlin Motorsport 1-2. Meanwhile, this is the battle in the scholarship class. Awesome stuff. Stephen Kane down the inside of Karen Jandok, following through on Ernesto Viso. And that is the other scholarship type, of course, that can go down to the wire these two races. Meanwhile, still... Come on, Jamie Green. He's just put the car on the grass there. He's kept it together. Danny Watts is the side of Jamie there for Jamie. Oh, well spotted, I tell you what, that was a big, big shunt. Not much runoff area there, and that is the peril of going wrong at Brant Hatch. Gets the car sideways, there you can see the contact as he came back on the track slow. What was I saying about Jamie Green and second place in the championship? It must seem like a very long way away. You just see as Jamie comes up, the left-hand side of the car hits the grass and really does a good job controlling it. He leaves Danny Watts absolutely nowhere to go on the exit. Well, Jamie Green luckily unhurt in that accident. One more race to go, don't forget. Of course, at the head of the order, Nelson Piquet, his rival for that second place in the championship, is still out in front. Meanwhile, a fantastic battle going on here. Robert Dahlgren, Andrew Thompson, Richard Antonucci, Ronnie Bremer, fast as I can say them, battling for six, seven, eight, nine, ten places. There is Jamie Green out of the car. He's going to have it all to do now in the final round of the championship. Meanwhile, this is the number three car, Michael Kierhan in 10th place. The new champion there, car number 21, Alan van der Merwe. And he is down in 11th place. And it's quite surprising. I mean, he has been the man to beat this season. And winning that championship in such style, maybe he's just taking it easy for this last race weekend. This battle still going on here. The number six car of Robert Dalton being pursued by Andrew Thompson. Then there's another battle going on, Richard Antonucci and Ronnie Bremer. Then the two Carlin motorsport cars. And there is the number one car, Robbie Kerr, with the new Lola Dome car out on a development test. And that's the world in the shape of 2004 for the British Formula 3 Championship. It's going to take the battle to the Delaras, or is it going to be the Delara drivers fighting among themselves? Great battle here, the Far Eastern Challenge between Tor Graves from Thailand in the number 23 car, Rizal Ramley from Malaysia in number 18. A bit of front-end damage on Ramley's car. Meanwhile, Robert Dornbos posts to a standstill in the pit lane in the menu motorsport car, the Dutchman. Well, he's going to be second on the grid for the second of these two races, only assuming they can fix the car in time, and I reckon that's their strategy. But this man, well, he is uncontested at the head of the field. We said at the start of this race, as we see, sadly, there, the number 35 car of Lewis Hamilton also heading for Pitwood. There is the 13th place car of Ernesto Viso. Now, he's got Robbie Kerr between himself and Stephen Kane, his scholarship first rival. He is in perfect position to pick up the maximum championship points in the scholarship class. That's just what he needs in terms of his potential title. But at the head of the order, it's 25 years since Nelson Piquet Sr. won in Formula 3 here. And, well, they're going for the double. Nelson Piquet Jr. heads for the check and flag. The Brazilian flag flies. Felipe Vergas there was mechanic to Nelson Piquet Sr. Now he's seeing Junior do the deal as well. That is pretty impressive stuff. And celebrations too, as across the line comes number 51, Nesta Viso, winner of the scholarship pass.
Well, look at that, a five and a half second advantage over Will Davidson. Danny Watts takes that third place ahead of Billy Asaro with Salignon, Dahlgren, Thompson, Antonucci, Bremer and Kiahan completing the top ten. I see you. Well done. That is a textbook win. Thank God I did a good start, normal start. And I hold my position and I did a very relaxed race. And the car wasn't too balanced, so I didn't want to push too hard. Um, I, I think I could have not get the fastest lap, but I was, I'm happy. Uh, I think everything worked the way I wanted. Green is out of the race and I won and I think I can repeat it today. So if you win again and, some, and Jamie doesn't do too well, you've got a good chance of getting second in the championship now. Good chance, so I'm going to get the second place. Ernesto, well done. You managed to keep uh, Robbie Kerr between you and Stephen. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so happy. I won the race. Uh, I should be right now seven points and a half ahead, so I'm very happy. And I bet you can almost taste the champagne at the championship now. Well, you, I don't want to say that. There's one more race left. Everything can happen, but I just, I'm going to do it the same as this race, just to try to keep the, the car in the black stuff and to keep, to keep myself calm. But Ernesto Visa, who's now got one hand on that scholarship title, join us after the break for the final race of the series. Welcome back to Brands Hatch. It's the last round, and it's all about one man, Ernesto Viso. If he can finish in the top two in his class, he'll be the 2003 scholarship champion. Steve, I reckon he can do it. What about you? Only if he keeps his nose clean and doesn't have an incident. And in Formula 3, anything can happen. But for Nelson Piquet Jr. and Robert Dornbos, a clear track ahead of them on the front row, ahead of Billy Asaro and Jamie Green, Eric Salignon and Alan van der Merwe. Row 4 of the grid, it's Will Davidson and Andrew Thompson. And completing the top 10, Robert Dahlgren and Ronnie Bremer, the Scandinavian duo from Sweden and Denmark, respectively, ahead of Richard Antonucci and Michael Pierhan. Engine revs coming up to the maximum once again. A little bit of creeping on the line. And a very, very quick start by Don Boss and PK Jr. Had his work cut out there to hold on into the lead. And a slow start by Billy Asaro as well. So it's Nelson PK Jr. from Robert Dornbos, Jamie Green and Alan van der Merwe up into four. Asaro tries to fight back on Eric Sonnyon, trying to go all the way around the outside of Druids. That's brave stuff. Asaro making a great move there around the outside of Sonnyon. And now he's got to defend from Davison up the inside. He tries. Doesn't quite make it, but now he's got a problem. He's got Dalgren all over the tail of him. Oh, fantastic racing this. Billy Asaro making a good ground there in the number 27 car. Will Davison holding off now. Robert Dalgren and Richard Antonucci taking advantage of that to get past Ronnie Bremer as well. Meanwhile, it's PK Jr. at the head of the field, but Robert Dornbos going with him. Then the rest of the pack streaming through down Hawthorne Hill. Oh! And dramatic stuff there as Ronnie Bremer tries to find his way past Richard Antonucci. Doesn't do it. Now, this is interesting, though, at the head of the order. Is Alan van der Merwe in fourth place? They're checking for the jump starts there. That looks good to me. I don't think anybody there anticipated the green light by too much. Certainly not enough to be penalised. But Nelson BK Jr., perfect start for him. Still heads the field, and he's starting to extend his advantage. But it's third and fourth place that interests me. Jamie Green and Alan van der Merwe. The two car in motorsport cars. Is van der Merwe going to ride shotgun to allow Jamie Green to get the points to be second in the championship? I think Jamie needs all the help he can after that accident in race one. And Alan van der Merwe, he's got the championship. He can be there to help his teammate and get Carl in that one two in the championship, like you say. Well, there's the 21 car of Alan van der Merwe trailing Jamie Green round. Meanwhile, great battles all the way up and down the order again. Will Davison right up on the tail of sixth place. Eric Salignon looks as if he's going to try and make a move, but it's the move of the brave down into Hawthorne Bend. 120 miles now, side by side. Oh, and he tries, but doesn't quite make it stick. Brilliant stuff, Eric Salignon holding to his guns there, literally through one of the fastest corners on the circuit. Robert Dahlgren may be trying to take advantage of that. And, whoa, well, that is an interesting... Michael Pierhart looks as if he might have a problem there. Look at the sparks underneath the number three car. And that is allowing the two scholarship pass cars, Ernesto Viso and Stephen Kane, to go past him. So, a problem there for Kierhan in the third of those golden red Carlin motorsport cars. Meanwhile, Nelson Pico Jr. extending his advantage over Robert Dornbos at the head of the field. Jamie Green in third place. Alan van der Merwe fourth across the line. Oh! And that is a huge accident at the entrance to Clearways. Very nearly takes our cameraman. Oh, and it's the two teammates, Torgraves and Lewis Hamilton. Well, that's no afternoon nap. 
Lewis Hamilton is out for the count in that car. The marshal there suddenly realises, and really now just checking out the situation, the safety car is heading out onto the track, the drivers all dropping their pace, and I think that was one of the biggest accidents I have ever seen in the British Formula 3 Championship. Well, Tor Graves, a bit wobbly-legged out of his car, looks like he's sprained his wrist as well. An absolutely huge shot there, looks like Tor's OK, hopefully Lewis will be getting out of the car soon as well, but it's on the approach to clearways, one of the fastest parts of the circuit, and it does look like they tacked the end of the tyre wall, so uh, not a lot of protection at that point. Well, the safety car out on track, and I think they're going to be waving the red flags. Michael Kierhan, that's an astute move, he got the car going before the red flags came out, so if they can work on his car, he can get back out onto the track. But let's see what happened here. This is actually the exit of Clearways. Our camera actually pointing across the track there, and there's the instant. Well, that's about as close to our cameraman as we want to see an F3 car. The good news is Lewis Hamilton, who was out for the count there with that side on impact, is now conscious and starting to take notice. He's out of the car, got two wrecked man and motorsport cars heading back to the pits. Meanwhile, the pressure is on for number four, Jamie Green. That second place in the championship is all down to him getting a position close enough to Nelson Piquet Jr. on the restart, and the results there are going to be on aggregate. You can see Lewis's car there, loads of damage, a really big shunt, but he's been taken off to hospital only for precaution. So here we have the restart again, PK perfect start, and Jamie's got a storm in one with Alan van der Merwe trying to go around the outside. And the real loser in that was Robert Dornbos, and I don't think Alan van der Merwe is going around the outside, he tucks back in right behind Jamie Green. Now, this is interesting, first and second places, Nelson Piquet Jr. and Jamie Green, the rest of the field squabbling behind. Oh, and a wild ride there down the grass. But for Jamie Green, this is perfect. If he sits behind Nelson Piquet Jr., he's going to get second place in the championship ahead of Nelson Piquet, and that is going to be that one-two that Carlin Motorsport were hoping for. And someone's off down at Graham Hill Bend. It's Clivio Piccioni. He's managed to keep the car going. Back on the track, but he's a long way behind the field now. Oh, and this is the scholarship class battle. Now look at the car on the right there. And Nesta Visa has got damage on the front of his car, but he muscles his way past Stephen Kane. Now the two other cars that have gone through there, three cars now, they are all in the championship class. So effectively, this is still 1-2. But what a fantastic dogfight all the way up and down the order. And don't forget, this is all going to be set on aggregate. Now this is where the damage on the front of Ernesto Visa's car has come from. Oh, a slider through its hairpin. And bang, into the back of Danny Watson. Look at the front wing. That's all been knocked disarray and I'm just wondering now whether Viso can hang on and get those championship points he needs for that scholarship title otherwise it will go to Stephen Kane and this is the battle for six Will Davidson is trying the outside line on Robert Dalgren doesn't quite make it oh and the same's going on for the scholarship pass that is Stephen Kane trying to get around the outside of the sparking Anesta Viso and Karen Chandok is there look in the rear view mirrors Karen Chandok's trying to get down the inside of both of them he's got two wheels on the grass Oh, this is awesome stuff, and there's contact! And there's the Viso, Stephen Kane tangle. Karen Chandok goes through on his own. I don't think Chandok will get the championship points. My guess is Ernesto Viso sitting in the gravel trap there with car 51 is going to be crowned champion in the kitty litter. On board now with Ernesto Viso. He's got loads of damage on that front wing. He's got Chandok down the inside. Stephen Kane is trying to come around the outside. Bang, straight into the side of it. I think the damage is stopping him turning in but maybe that was a professional foul because he knows he's going to win the championship. Well, I wouldn't uh, necessarily say that, but there again, names like Schumacher and Senna have been involved in similar incidents. There's certainly no friendly conversation between the two championship rivals. It's Karen Chandok across the line. He is going to get the class victory here, but that is not going to be good enough for him to become champion. Nesta Viso is going to be the scholarship pass winner of 2003. Good run, though, from Karen Chandok, staying out of trouble there. Meanwhile, an even better run for Nelson Piquet Jr., a 10-second advantage now over Jamie Green. Then it's Alan van der Merwe, Robert Dornbos recovering from that very slow start in the pale blue menu motorsport car, holding on to fourth place on the track ahead of Billy Asaro. But don't forget, the first three laps of this race will also count for the aggregate result. And effectively, the man who'd actually extended a bit of a good run there, Nelson Piquet Jr., was being closely followed by Robert Dornbos, so he's actually going to gain six seconds. That will put him ahead of the two Carlin Motorsport cars, but Dornbos doesn't really figure in the championship. So where the two Carlin cars are, 
Well, that is going to give Jamie Green second place in the title. You up with that? No, I'm as confused as most people now, but I think Jamie Green's going to do enough to get second in the race. He's pulling away very nicely from uh, Alan van der Merwe there, and he's doing enough to give Carlin their one-two. Number one car of Robbie Kerr moving up ahead of Danny Watts and Virus Housie. Meanwhile, we are on to the last lap of the race. This is the battle for the places, but ten whole seconds ahead of them, it's Nelson Piquet Jr. And they are celebrating again on the pit wall. He's come to the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit, seen and conquered twice. They are all absolutely delighted for him. Great run by Jamie Green is going to clinch second place in the championship for him though ahead of Nelson Piquet Jr. But after a great introduction to Brands Hatch, I'm sure Piquet is going to be keen to be back. Well, there is the confirmation. 11.79 seconds ahead of Dawn Boss on the aggregate result. Jamie Green dropping to third, Alan van der Merwe to fourth. But there's only one winner, Nelson Piquet Jr. Nelson, your top work. You couldn't ask for a better finish to your first season in British F3. Yeah, well, I don't know what to say. I think... Uh... The weekend was perfect, perfect. I never imagined we would have a, such a good weekend as this one because I was arriving uh, to, Brand, to Brands here first time without knowing any anything about Brands Hatch. Uh, because I'm, I'm so, so really happy. I think it's really important for us because we, we really needed uh, a weekend like this for everybody to cheer up, for us to work very hard at the end of the year and for us to try, try to win the championship next year because the team really worked fantastically. Uh, I mean, everybody, everybody, since Kevin, Aguinaldo, Keka, Philippe, Glenn, everybody worked really hard and um, the victory is for them. Definitely, it's definitely paid off and we look forward to seeing you again next year. I hope so and win all the races. <laughs> Well, here's to next year for Nelson Piquet Jr., third in the championship on his first attempt. But it's Alan van der Merwe and Jamie Green, 1-2 for the Carlin Motorsports team. And after the drama in the scholarship class, Ernesto Viso claims the title, but Karen Chandok gets the honour of victory. Karen, well done. You certainly took advantage of the situation, didn't you? Yeah, it was really strange. I mean, we came out of paddock and Stephen was on the outside, Viso in the middle and me on the inside. We went three wide up the hill and... I was on the grass, Visa put me on the grass on the inside and so I backed out of it and they took each other off. Um, you know, I, I think I, we would have, I would have passed Visa and so would Steven, you know, he had a problem with the car. Luckily for me I was on the inside and they were both on, alongside me on the outside and that was it and after that I just cruised around to the wind. And that's so well done, you've been waiting all year for this. Yeah, I'm the champion now, um, yeah, yeah, it's been a very difficult year, we have been uh, building up it was a point of the season where we were 44 points behind and being now the champion of the of the class is something like very important for me because it shows that I've been working hard. Uh, one, one lap before I, I crashed in Druid, I, I broke my wing also in Druid, so that next lap was a bit, it was a very cautious in the fast corners without wing in the front and then in that lap, Kane was going to pass me in the outside and I lost my control in the front and I just took him out. Well, Ernesto Viso, the scholarship champion in a season of drama, action and controversy. And that's been both in the scholarship class and the main championship. This season has been a classic. Two wins for Nelson Piquet then to finish off a cracking debut season for him. For Ernesto Viso in the scholarship class, it's gone even better. Despite finishing off in the gravel trap, he's wound up with the 2003 championship. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you next year.